see if I can work something in this um, computer, but I don't see how it's working, so let it load. In the meantime, you and I are live. I'm going to try to see if I can work something in this. Lower that. I want to be able to, um, hmm. Oh, I'm having like massive issues of trying to make things happen because of all this internet stuff going on. Well, today is going to be a combination of day 14 and 15 because yesterday we were at church. And so... um. The timing of when we start now is six o'clock, so it takes us about 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes to drive to the location. And so that made it really difficult to get on F5. So I gotta figure that out for the next remaining time how I'm gonna do this. But we are doing day 14 and 15, which means I'm going to give you two promises today. I'm going to double up your mantle, double portion. So let's just wait a few minutes. Let's wait a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are bringing peace into this world, peace into this atmosphere, peace into our homes, God, peace in our hearts and our minds. So today we're going to do Psalm 23, verse 4. I'm sure you know Psalm 23. Um, but because we know Psalms 23, I think I'm just going to read it all and then we'll go back to the promise. So it's Psalms 23 and it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. Some verse says green pastures. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bring honor to his name. And when I walk through the through the valley, no, my this version says, when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me, and your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. And you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. What a blessing is Psalms 23, the whole chapter in itself. The one we're looking at, it says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. 
I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and they comfort me. You know, you could do a whole teaching on Psalms 23, just on verse 4. But we're just going to talk about the blessing. The blessing that's found in Psalms 23 is that the Lord is shepherding us. He's leading us. We have an interacting, ongoing relationship with him. And so therefore we can hear the shepherd's voice. In the uh, Eastern world, the shepherds, they guided their sheep, but they also led them and they provided for them. They provided food, they provided water. They took care of of them by, you know, binding up what was bruised, strengthening the ones that were weary. Uh, if there was a cut or they were sick, they took care of it. They rescued them when they went to stray on their own. They knew their names and they assisted in delivering the lambs. In every way, simply, they just loved them. I just think about just our relationship with the Lord and how he guards us. I just, just feel like he's like our watchman, you know, like he guards us. He watches over us. He looks for us. He's given us a name. And when he calls our name, we respond to the shepherd. We have an ongoing relationship with him. And he has an ongoing relationship with us. And when we're weary, he strengthens us. And when we're hurting, he's healing us. And when we're in pain, he's comforting us. He's just a good shepherd. When we tend to look away from him and go our own way, he comes for us. Just so loving. He gently leads us. We hear his voice. We follow him. We listen to Christ. We listen to his word and we obey. And God cares for us because he loves us and wants us to glorify him by bringing honor to his name. I think this moment right now, we are being like a sheep to the shepherd where he is attending to us, where He's delivering us. You know, the Passover talks about deliverance. He's delivering us from the things we picked up when we strayed or the things we picked up in the field. Things that are hurting us, that have not been healed, that we have not dealt with. Comforting us and things we grieved. Teaching us. He's teaching us. Teaching us. And I say that because this morning, I had this teaching with him, the Holy Spirit. I, I'm not going to share until it's I complete it, but God is speaking to us right now. He's always been speaking. If the sheep will hear his voice, if the sheep would hear his voice, even though we're walking through the valley of the darkest, is that what it said? the darkest valley of the darkest valley i am walking through the darkest valley and i do not fear and that's how we are right now we're walking through a dark valley and the lord's reminding us not to be afraid because he is with us this is a time to come to the lord as a sheep looking for their shepherd and allowing the shepherd to take care of his sheep.
What a good scripture. You know, sheep lack vision. <laughs> and we're easily frightened by new circumstances, especially when it's dark. The presence of the shepherd calms us. The rod was a heavy, it was a heavy staff like, which the shepherd could kill an attacking beast with it. The staff was the shepherd's crook, which he used to assist the individual sheep. It was our guidance. And anything that came, any enemy that came our way, he could kill it with it. That's amazing. You know, verse 5 says, You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. And the feast is a table. There's a table. Doesn't necessarily refer to a piece of furniture used by humans, for the word simply means something spread out. A flat place in a hilly country could be called a table. And sometimes the shepherds stopped the flock at these tables and allowed them to eat and rest. Find rest this season. And in your rest, find what needs to be delivered. Allow the shepherd to deliver you. Allow the shepherd to heal you. And allow the shepherd to work through you. For there's much that will be required of us once this thing passes. Psalms 18.3 is our second blessing. Psalms 18.3 I called on the Lord who was worthy of praise and he saved me from my enemies. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise and he saved me from my enemy. But can we go to Rome, to number one, to verse one? As David begins to say, I love you, Lord. I think that this is the season. It should have been always, but a lot of people have lost their first love. This is the season to find their love for the Lord. Where you can go to him and say, God, I love you. You're my strength. Lord, you're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield. The power that saves me. The place of safety. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise and he saved me from my enemies. We need to find this truth in our hearts with the Lord. This truth in our hearts for the Lord, the love of God. We need to find that. The strength, the strength of the Lord is my joy. We need to find the joy of our salvation. Last night in the midst of a prayer, we had this prophetic song that was coming forth. And it was Psalms 51, Psalms 51, 12. Psalms 51, 12. It says, restore me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. But it was Psalms 51 verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Another verse says, let's see if I find it. I really like the way this verse said it. Uh, I think I can find it because it's, if it's this one, it's a different uh, version. Ah, uh, there it is. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with your willing spirit. I don't know why it stops there. Because the verse says, uphold me with the willing spirit to sustain me. But it be restored to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me 
with your willing spirit to sustain me. Oh. It's like restore my joy, God, of your salvation. Remind me again of the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your willing spirit that will sustain me. This is such an amazing, okay, so you're saying, well, it's just an amazing scripture just to hold on to. I feel like the hearts are crying out. Psalms 51, uh, Psalms 51, 12 to the Lord. And, and, and even though people might not be confessing it with their mouth, but their hearts are in confessions before the Lord. And it's crying out that very scripture. Psalms 51, 12 is what the Lord is hearing. Many are getting it. Many are understanding where we are. And many are seeking the face of God. And many are proclaiming promises that have not yet come to pass. Many are, are, are releasing and reminding themselves of prophetic words. But the one thing they're also coming back to is that first love. They're coming back to that first love identity. Psalms 23.4 and Psalms 18.3. That's today's blessings for you. And I am praying, I am praying that if you can hear the shepherd's voice, then do not stray and be with the shepherd. Allow the shepherd to lead you. Allow the shepherd to, to, to guide you. Allow the shepherd to deliver you of your strongholds. Allow the shepherd to, to bind up your wounds so that it will be permanently healed this season. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. God is faithful, but we too must be found faithful to God. And I feel as many as many other people are feeling that God is dismantling idols. So Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you for your promises, God, our yes and amen. We think that you're bringing us into a season, God, of coming back to you, of coming back to you, God, of finding our first love with you, God. God, I just thank you, God, that you reminded me of something today that you put in my DNA before I was born. You reminded me of something very precious, God. Something you've given me before my mother even conceived me. And so Lord, I just thank you, God, for your life lessons. I thank you for your remembrance. How you say, remember me. Don't just do this in remembrance of me, but remember me even in not, even not in your doings. Remember me. Remember me. Not in your works, but remember me in your love. You are not of this world. We are from heaven. We have our kingdom inside of us. And we have become so earthly bound that we're not heavenly good. And Lord, your prayer was God bring heaven to earth. And you have put us here so that we can bring heaven to earth. So we would take dominion and bring back the people of God to the first love. Lord, kindle our hearts to move in your love to move for your love, to war for love. God, it's not about ministry. 
It's not about ministry. It was never about ministry. It was never about titles. It was never about the gifting. It was always about your love and your love for the lost. And Lord, I just thank you, God, that you're bringing our hearts back to remember. To remember what the gospel is all about. It's about being with you, Father. And so, Lord, just woo them into your intimate chambers, God. That you'll find many of your children right on their knees, finding themselves right before you once again. Like a childlike faith. As a childlike faith. Thank you, Jesus. Restore our childlike faith in us. Restore the joy of salvation in us. Oh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God is, is faithful. Be found faithful this season. For the Lord is good. And yes, he endures forever, but we too have things that we have been assigned to to be responsible for and completing the work that Jesus has left us to do. It's called the Great Commission. And so I hope this helps you today because it's helped me and we're getting closer. And I'm looking forward to a great big breakthrough for all of us. So Father looks for not one to perish. So be found in wisdom this season. And so I bless you and I seal this in Jesus' name. Continue on your day with the presence, with the presence of the Lord with you.